to Lee Chantel, who's going to do a presentation over you about, about half an hour, and you can use some Q&A. I might just walk around because um, that's feeling like I'm a bit trapped behind there. So hi everyone, Lee Chantel. Um, I'm only I'm not only talking about veganism today, but I'm also talking about digital wellness. So I've done like I'm giving two little presentations about both of those things um, from James's request actually. So thank you, James, for inviting myself and my parents here today. Appreciate it. <laughs> so let's start with what being a vegan means in 2021. So you might have heard the term like vegan, flexitarian, vegetarian, plant-based. All these terms are used interchangeably and they all mean something different. Um, so just be very careful how you use those terms. And um, there's 600,000 vegans in Australia now, so that's quite a lot. I've been vegan for 24 years now and just celebrated that in January and look at me still alive. <laughs> and um, there's a really good website called Faunalytics and they do a lot of research in this area and they found that tweets related to um, animal friendly diets like veganism are very prevalent, in particular um, more so than animal advocacy aspects. And so this is one of the issues that we have as a movement because it's very focused on dietary aspects at the moment. And in particular, words like vegan and plant-based, they're used a lot on Twitter. So these have spiked in the first week of January. And this could be related to the fact there's a website called Veganuary, which encourages people to try the vegan lifestyle for the first month of the year. And a lot of people are making the good positive changes at the first week or the first month of the year. So we've seen that. So if you're not aware, a vegan is someone who does their best to um, not use animals and to not cause any harm to any animals or exploit any animals for anything. So that's not only food but other purposes as well. And the term vegan was coined in 1944 by a guy from the UK Vegan Society, which is probably the biggest um, vegan society at the moment. So as a vegan, we choose not to consume any animal flesh, any animal secretions, products or byproducts. But, as I mentioned before, not just diet. So there's non-dietary aspects, and this includes not using animals for purposes of like clothing, so leather, for example, cosmetics or household goods, so your cleaning products, animal testing, and animal, ent and animal entertainment, like say circuses. So these are like, Veganism is like a set of ethical guidelines that as a vegan you choose to commit to. And one of the main reasons that a lot of people are more plant-based or become vegan is because of the environmental impacts that our diet at the moment has on the world. And one of the things is you could say we are eating up the world at the moment. And the global food system is one of the worst contributors at the moment to the issues that we have in our environment. It's resource intensive, unsustainable, and it contributes to greenhouse gases. And here's a quote here just from a new report this year that's saying that if globally we change to a more plant-based diets, then it's able to um, lessen the impact that animal farming has on biodiversity, land use, and the environment. And this is not only good for the animals and the environment, but it's also good for populations, health populations all over the world. Plus, an added bonus helps reduce the risk of pandemics, which we all know about at the moment. So nothing really negative at the moment, is there? Um, and I just wanted to mention, um, there's this new book out it's called Your Life, Your Planet. You can have a look at it at the front. Um, it's through Australian Geographic. I was one of the experts in that. And there's just a few, it's all um, broken down into different um, areas. So some of these stats here are from the food or the kitchen chapter. And it's just comparing how much water and um, carbon dioxide is produced in comparison to say like pulses, which is beans, legumes, stuff like that, comparison to rice and beef. And then you've got some information about red meat. And um, 100 kilograms of meat Australians consume each year, which I think is quite a lot. 
Um, and yet today we've got one in eight Australians who are now vegetarian, and that used to be one in ten. Um, so we're having some slow but steady growth. And we just launched that book on Friday, actually. And so, as I mentioned before, veganism is more than just dietary aspects and food aspects. So to me, veganism has helped expand my awareness of ethical, mindful, and conscious decision making. And so as I mentioned, there's environmental aspects, there's the food aspects, and obviously animal aspects that kill the harms. But also veganism and learning about these things um, relates to some social justice issues as well. So this and how they intersect and how these all can relate to each other and um, influence each other. So, um, for example, feminism is an example of that, and like oppression and privilege also. And I, it also helped me become a more compassionate person in regards to animals, and also in, in regards to our um, human animal friends, who sometimes they can be very hard to be compassionate for. It's also very good um, to learn how to be an effective communicator and to learn interpersonal skills as well. And um, I think a lot of people are becoming more aware of how animal cruelty issues relate to other areas in the world. So an example I want to give you is the Melbourne Cup. So there's heaps of horses who die and get injured every year in the Melbourne Cup. And there's a heap of other things that impact people. So like gambling losses, there's glorification of alcohol abuse, a drastic increase of violence towards women as well. And um, yeah, Murdoch media are right on top of that. Um, so compassion is a great, a great way to start. And I believe that veganism is a great way to put compassion into action and it's to live in line with your beliefs and lead by example to show you how you want the world to be. And part of that quote of mine was in a Edgar's Mission vegan cookbook, which you can have a look at if you need some vegan inspiration. And so I wanted to talk about one of the interesting aspects that's new at the moment that maybe some of you are aware of is cultured meat. And when I say cultured meat, it means you get a cell of a living animal, say a cow, and you're taking that somewhere into a research laboratory and you are creating more cells from that original cell. And you're creating something that is more sustainable, that's why a lot of people do it, because as one of the quotes says, we're running out of fish. And like I mentioned before, um, the, the way that we're consuming animals at the moment is not sustainable. So people are seeing this. There's a heap of money that's gone into this heap of investments. This is one of the bigger investment areas at the moment, especially in the US. And as you can see here, there's some information about um, Asia Pacific and how that market's going to increase 25% over the next five years, and in particular in um, Thailand and China, because they're also very focused on health, taste, and sustainability. And myself being involved in this movement for quite a while, and other people in this industry in particular, um, the future of the, this industry and the mock meat in particular, it, it's all about the taste, affordability, and availability of stuff. Because at the moment it's a bit high priced, and you know some of the taste is um, a bit lacking, and we need it to be places where people would buy animal products. So you need it to be there so people can compare them or buy it instead. And also there's like consumer perceptions and this is around you know social norms or behavioural change aspects related to health and sustainability as well. And one of the things that I think is very important in the movement is to work with farmers who want to try something new and who want to move away from animal-based agriculture and animal-based farming into non-animal-based non farming. And this is really important because there's a lot of farmers who want to do this. They don't know where to get the information and they need assistance and resources for it. And this is a really good group called Food Frontier. I don't know if anyone's heard of them. Australian-based. And um, they are involved with a lot of the new protein source innovation. And they're involved, there's quite a few things they're involved with there, including the CSIRO. 
and they focus on export pathways for these new protein sources and cellular agriculture regulation and labeling for plant-based products. So if you want to find out any more about a vegan stuff in particular, if you have a look at all those um, charities listed on the left-hand side, they've been evaluated as top charities from the Animal Charity Evaluators Group, and that's, that would be a good place to start, and in particular I'd like to direct you to Fawn Analytics, because I'm quite into the data. Um, and through Queensland, there's the Animal Justice Party, which is a political party all along these sort of ideals, and Animal Liberation Queensland, who have been around for quite a while. VivaLaVegan.net is my website, so you can find a lot more vegan information there if you like, recipes, articles, and my YouTube channel. I've also released a vegan athletes book, so if you're into fitness or the health aspects of veganism, that's a good way to start. And so I'll put up this video on YouTube, I'll have the slides on SlideShare. There are all my other websites at the bottom, and I'm about to launch a digital equilibrium one, which we'll talk about in a moment. So that's the first half of my presentation. And you can stay up at the front with, with me. Okay. Um, can I just say that was one of the best, most professional presentations okay. that we've had mm. at our club. Thank Just you. Another round of applause for our club. In, in my game, in the advertising game, pitching is a part of our process. The way that you maintained our attention, engaged us, but also walked around the room, it shows that you've done this a lot of times yeah. before. But you've also obviously been coached or seen the best people. Yeah. You're using those tools to keep people's attention. Mm -hmm. We're in the attention economy. You, you did a fantastic yeah. job, so I want to let you know you did a great Thank job. You very much. Oh. Appreciate it. Um, so, what I also want to just uh, say that is uh, I relate to what you're talking about here and, and uh, the one thing I wanted to share was there was an amazing campaign, it's, the, the brand name escapes me, but they took the insights from what you're talking about here about how much time people spend on things that are unnecessary. And it takes your time away from the things that are necessary, even more so the time you spend with each other. And they use the average age of what people are based on their ethnicity and the age that they are at that time. And they use facts and information like what we're talking about there. You add time at work, time asleep, time on your phone, doing things. They actually worked out. What if I was to tell you I only have one and a half years left with you, the time available that we have to talk to each other before we both die? Now, that information all of a sudden makes you think, what am I doing mm. spending time on these other things when I should be spending time putting my phone down or organizing a catch up instead of putting it off? Yes. And that's when you attach the emotion mm. and meaningfulness to something that then creates movement and change. So you're doing a wonderful job. Obviously, there's something that drives you, something at some stage of your life made you not only invest heavily in the vegan but also this stuff's powering you day in, day out. What is that drive? Um, I'm here to change the world, really. So, <laughs> so you know, it's pretty simple. One, one tomato at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, the veganism, the environmental stuff, the feminism was my thing for years, and this is my new passion. So, you know, um, it comes, there's a few different things that come and go as I evolve or whatever, and yeah, this is my latest one. So. And I think it's just really important because we're you. so attached to everything, and especially because people don't understand it. And I think, you know, oh, we just educate people about all this information and then they'll change. But I know from my psychology training that it's, you know, behavioral change is very, very hard. And it's like comes down to social norms all over it too. So I know it's a lot of work, but, you know, I, I have the ability to get stuff done. So. Yeah. Good. Mum and Dad must be proud. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Did a good presentation. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. James, you're impressed. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me to tell us today. Sure. Uh, any and, questions? Uh, what's that? Yeah, questions. She, she, she's happy to start questions. Yeah. Let's do some questions. questions. Now you can start the questions, Matt. I know you're heavily invested in psychology. Would have been really interesting for you. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely. Um, 
A lot of questions. Uh, one on the, the two questions on the on the vegan uh, is I saw a documentary that while we in the West are cutting back on meat, in China and India, as the middle class gets gets um, they get more wealthy, they want they want the they sort they view that as what you know the Western lifestyle. That's that's number one, which seemed to be a little bit different to the information you had there that China was going the other way. But anyway, that, that's that, more to do with the culture. Okay, right, yeah. yes, but that's but yeah, that's, that's, that's what true. I saw. So that's number one because you've got two billion people, whatever, hundreds of millions of people going the Western way. Uh, the the that's a worry, but my question is on the animal, you said on testing, uh, is that including medical research? Yeah. Right. So yeah. You, you're against uh, mice and yes. so forth being yeah. tested on? That's, they're not, they don't have anything that relates to humans. So it's 2021, you know, and um, we've got a lot of a lot of stuff that needs to be tested, like say the COVID, COVID vaccinations at the moment, that needs to be tested on humans before you know that it's safe. And there's a lot that aren't even up to that sort of stage. And there's a lot of new ways that you can test on things, a lot of like, um, studies that are done without animal testing. How, how do you feel about um, the embryonic stem cells? How do you, if, like because some of it's coming from Where are the embryos coming from? Aborted fetuses. Yeah, well, it's not really a big issue, so right. um, I, don't, okay. I don't really have a thought about that to be honest. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. Any other, one last question? Not a question, please. Okay. All right, well, round of applause for Lee Chetel. Thank you so much.